Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter, and today I'm gonna to take you into Design Space. We're gonna take this Buddy the Elf file and make him big. So um, before we get started though, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I really appreciate all the support. Okay, this file is from Kayla at the Salty Yankee. You know I go there a lot. Her files are great. So if you go to the saltyyankee.com, you can filter by Christmas just to see if there's anything else that you like on there. Um, but I've already downloaded this. So the file, uh, the download comes in three different versions. So we're gonna go and upload them right now to see what we have. I actually have not taken a peek at all. I just downloaded the files. So I'm gonna go to upload, upload image, browse, and they're in my downloads. So I'm gonna go and find downloads and I'm going to actually upload each one to see what we have. So let's see what this first one is. So this one, it's the whole thing, Salty Yankee, Buddy the Elf. So I do, um, I don't, I just wanna make sure that I can find these files later. So I'm just changing the name a little bit to Buddy the Elf. And um, this looks good, let's upload it. What happens is when you rename the file or if you leave it there with the name that it comes in with, that's how you're gonna find it in the Cricut's uh, image library. So it's sitting in that library with the hundreds of thousands of files from Cricut and also whatever you've uploaded. So you wanna be able to find it again. So let's upload another image just to make sure that we don't need the other files. I'm gonna go back to downloads and let's see what this one is. All right. I'm just gonna upload all of these because right now, oh, I see, this has the body too. Okay, so I want, when you're, in a minute. <laughs> Let's go and upload the last one just to make sure we're done and then we can talk about all of them. Which one is this? Uh, why is it not working? Let's go back. Let's add it again. Okay, nothing's coming up, so I'm assuming it's just gonna be these two. So let's go back into Uploads. I'm gonna add both of these. Now, when we make an off the mat character, one of the main things that we're always looking for is to make it big, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be off the mat. You would just make it on a size that you can easily work with. So when we're doing off the mat, what we're looking for is some easy tips is that we want multiple pieces of the image. So in this case, we've got the face. If And just to use round numbers, it'll help us uh, figure out how big we can make it, right? So we've got the face, 10 inches. We sort of have like this middle section of the collar. We've got the hands, collar, belt. I think we can do 30 inches, right? Um, let's see, we wanna make sure that we, I want all the colored, parts of it to not um, have any seams in it. And so I'm gonna do it at 30 inches and see what we have. I don't know what is going on right now. Maybe it's my system. Let's try to upload and see if that works. All right, I may have to get out of this. Let's go and see. Um, do I need to save? <laughs> now you can see all my other projects. I'm gonna be doing this one soon, but it won't it won't hit the content calendar for quite some time. Oh my gosh, nothing. All right. You know, when it's down, it's down. So I'm gonna get out of this and let's do a new one and hope. I do try to remember to save constantly because Design Space has, you know, is known to be a little bit emotional at times. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you save um, as often as you can remember. Okay, so we're in here. Let's go to new project. And while we're here, let's see if, let's upload that third image just in case since we're already here. That's when things start to go wonky, right? Okay, so that's just the head, I'm gonna upload it. Okay, so we've got our three options. We've got just the face, which would be really difficult to make big because it's literally just the face. <laughs> then we have the face with the upper body, but not the full, so we're going to do. We're definitely gonna do this one. So this one's gonna give us the, the best 
uh, option when it comes to making it big and making it seamless. We know that the black background will have seams in it, but it's so minor, it's at the edges. We have all these other things that we can do with the file um, that, to make it cute. So let's right away, um, the first thing that I notice is that my file is unlocked, the image. So I wanna lock it because when I wanna make it bigger, I wanna make it bigger and longer proportionately. So I'm gonna lock it first and then I'm gonna to go to height and make it 30 inches. And let's just take a look at this file at 30 inches, what do we have? We have 30 inches and 17 inches wide. So we definitely, we're gonna to have to slice this up a, a bit. Let's look at all our pieces and see what we have. We've got the green. How is the green? The green looks like it's in pieces. Let's see. There's the hands. So I know at 30 inches, the face should be fine. The face is 9.77 inches. We should be good with this file. Um, let's look at the green. And the green, we can't ungroup it, so it's all together. Um, so let's look at this file, let's ungroup it for a minute, and let's look at the green. So the green is in, oh, it's in multiple pieces. We could actually make him bigger than this. Um, but let's just contour and let's hide all and it leaves us this arm, which is this, it, I'm pretty sure that this arm is the mirror image of this arm. So this is the biggest piece, right? Let's see how big that piece is. So it's uh, seven inches by 14 inches. So it is actually pretty big. Let's turn this and see what we have. We'll unlock it to see our actual dimensions. Oh, okay. So we might have to stick with 30 inches because look, this piece diagonally is 10.77 by 11.76, which means I can cut this on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Um, my Cricut is gonna want me to cut with larger than 12 by 12 because it's gonna say that the limit is 11.5 inches. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I don't start my paper at the zero, zero line at the very top. I'm gonna go down a little bit I mean, ideally you would go down a quarter of an inch, then you know exactly it's gonna cut there, but it's hard to, I, I mean, I know there's a line for a quarter of an inch, I believe on the mat. Um, no, there isn't, but you can kind of eyeball it. I would do a little bit less than a quarter of an inch just to give yourself a little bit of room, and then it's gonna cut past the 12 inch line, which is totally okay, because your paper is gonna go past the 12 inch line just a little bit. All right, so we're keeping this at 30 inches. What I'm gonna do is go back to contour and show all, because now we need all the pieces. And what we know is these pieces right here, I'm gonna zoom in just so that you can see. All right, they're super close together. I'm not gonna be able to slice this out by isolating certain pieces. So what I'm gonna do instead is I want this green piece to be in one, two, three, four, five, six, six pieces. So I'm gonna contour. So when I'm contouring, I want six pieces, then I need six total uh, copies of this image. So I'm gonna go to duplicate. Here's copy two, three, four, five, six, right? I'm gonna go to contour. I'm gonna contour the first one, hide all. It's gonna leave me the right arm. So here's my right arm. Go to the next one, contour. Now hide all. It defaults to one being shown because if it truly hid all, the whole image would disappear, right? So that's why there's the first piece is always the one that's gonna remain. So what I want is I want the second piece, but I don't want the first piece, so I click that back. So now I have my second piece. And I'm just gonna go in order. The next one, I'm gonna go to contour, hide all. I want the third piece, I don't want the first piece. Then the next piece, contour. I wanna hide all, I want the fourth piece, I don't want the first piece. So you can kinda of see it starts to get, it starts to make sense, right? <laughs> all right, let's go to contour, hide all, I want this piece, I don't want this piece. 
and there's my middle piece and then the last one is this little one right there contour hide all I want the bottom I don't want the top and there I have all my pieces now okay so that's simple right let's look at this this I'm gonna ungroup and what do we have we've got all those little pieces. This is going to be cute. I like the idea that this is separate because we can then add foam foam tape, foam squares to the back of it and it will pop out and look like a piece that's on top and not so flat um, on there. So it'll be nice. What we could do too is we can maybe even, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this green so that we can have one set glued down one set glued slightly on top but will curl it a little bit and give it even more dimension so it's going to pop out and also have um, the leaves be a little bit flexible i think that's going to look really really good okay let's see what else we have we've got his face so um we'll see if we need to do anything with the face but he's got this big mouth open right and his eyes um, and the eyebrows. I want to make sure that if there are any seams in this face, this is what you would do. I'm going to show you right now. We may not have to use it, but we'll make a duplicate copy. And we're going to go to contour and we're going to hide all. So it's going to leave us the face. And what we're going to do with this face is we're going to change it to black. And I'm going to arrange it, send it to the back. If we had seams in the mouth or the eyes, what will happen is we'll add this black piece back here and now the face will be seamless. We know the face is seamless, like the actual skin is going to be seamless. Now we're not going to see any seams in the black at all. And it's important in the face because it, that is your central focal point. So if you have any seams in the face, in the middle, I don't care so much about the blacks on the side, like the outlines on the sides, because you're not going to notice it. We have other tips and tricks to, to diminish that seam as much as possible. Um, but the actual, like in the center, if there are any seams, it's so distracting. So I want to make sure that in this mouth, in the eyes, the eyebrows, even though it may be small, it's central. So like, I don't want any seams there. It may be that when we go to do the black background and when we slice it, we don't even touch the face, then we don't need to cut out this black. That black is only if there are seams in the face. Okay, let's see what else we have here. We've got the black, so I'll move that down here. We've got the belt and you know the belt is separated so I like that too so we can definitely um, make the belt stand out too because it's on top of the outfit so I like that um, this is you know it's black we've got the black background what I would like to do with this is I would slice this apart so that if there's a chance of saving some paper I would like to so I'm gonna bring in a square this one unlike the green sweater is um, it's spaced out enough that I can slice it apart see I can put this square and completely isolate just this right side so that I can slice it cleanly so I'm gonna grab the two items and I'm going to slice. When you slice, you can only slice two items at a time. So I'm slicing the big square with the black piece. And now this piece is completely by itself. I can get rid of the slice results. I don't need that. I'm going to use the same square. I'm now going to separate these two. I'm going to make sure that the one piece is completely in the square and the other piece is completely out of the square so that I get a clean slice. I'm going to grab the two items and slice get rid of my slice results so now I have the three pieces because later if I need to move this somewhere and do this so that I can cut down on cutting an extra sheet of paper I will gladly take it <laughs> all right here are the hands um, let's see what is left we've got the hair the hair is good I'm leaving the eyebrows there because no matter what it's inside this space and it's already going to be cut I'm fine with that. Okay, what do we have? We've got the the tongue and the lips and the eyes. Okay, everything is separated. I think we're good. 
All right, now we've got this piece. I would wanna separate this. This is four pieces. They are close together. I will duplicate two, three, four, four images. Contour, hide all. We've got one. Next one, contour, hide all. I want the second, not the first. Um, next one, contour, hide all. I want the third, not the first. <laughs> And the last piece, contour, hide all. I want the last piece, not the first. And there you have it. Okay, now I'm gonna get rid of this square. We don't need it. The only thing we have left is the black background. He's big. So I'm gonna go to my images and I'm gonna search for grid of squares. That is what I'm calling my grid of squares. They are nine squares completely flushed with each other. It's an SVG file available on my website, theuselesscrafter.com. If you don't wanna pay for it, you can sign up for my, subscribe to my newsletter, and you will get a an email with a code to go back to buy the file and use the code and check out for free. Um, okay, so the reason why you wanna use it is, let's insert it. And we'll make this small. We'll move down so that we have a clean area. Um, you have the squares completely flushed. And that's important because when we're putting this together, it's nice when all the four corners go up against each other because then there's as close as possible, we're gonna tape it up. We don't want there to be any gaps um, because what happens with the black is when the light hits it, we then see the seams, right? So we want to make sure that the black background is as seamless as possible, knowing that it is impossible to not have seams because we are doing an off the mat project, which means we're doing things that are bigger than our mat. So we're slicing it up and then piecing it back together like a puzzle. And we want the puzzle when together to be as amazing as possible. So that's why I like my grid of squares. I like having it as an SVG file because every time I do one of these projects, I don't need to recreate it. I just need to go into my image library and bring it in and insert it. All right, first thing you want to do, you want to position it um, onto whole numbers just because in case you make any mistakes and you need to undo and get back to the beginning It's a lot easier when everything was on a whole number. So I'm just going to round this to 3 and 34 Then you're going to ungroup it now. We're going to bring this guy go to a range Bring to the front and we're going to see where he goes now remember I knew his head was slim so I didn't think that we would have any seams in the face because see we can cut it right here we won't need to make that copy of the black the face the copy of the face in black um, but what we can do is I don't necessarily want to cut this up into three pieces right so what we can do is this We've got him there. And then let's get rid of the squares that we don't need. Okay. Okay, we're gonna slice this. Then we're gonna move this and we're gonna use our arrow key and we're just gonna shift it all the way over so that the next, instead of having six pieces here, I'm going to have it in four pieces and four big sizable pieces. All right. Um, you know what? Remember the belt buckle? Wait a minute. Oh, the belt was completely on top, right? It was one. Let's go look at the belt again. Oh, no, the belt was in a couple pieces. OK, but then we had that. OK, I think we're good. OK. Um, let's bring the elf in. Let's go to upload and bring him back. Oh, it's going to be in this area. It doesn't matter. Okay, never mind. I was in my head. I couldn't remember where the belt was, but the belt's all the way at the bottom. So, uh, we're good. We're going to split this in four, basically. So now we're going to do one square at a time. Slice. Slice, slice. 
All right, so now we have him. We're just putting him back together. So good, right? This we can just get rid of. And there you have it. He's ready. Let's go. Well, oops, let me see this. Elf 30 inches. Technically, Buddy the Elf. <laughs> all right, let's go to make it. And, and I want to show you how I move things around and all that good stuff. All right, here is our white. Our white supposedly goes past the 12 inch line. I don't think so. Let's start moving these things around and see if we can make this better. See, if these two were separated, it would be easy, but it works here, so I'm totally fine with that. Oh, we can definitely make this work. Oops. All right, so supposedly Cricut thought we needed two sheets for this we can do it in one we can probably make it even better but um i am not going to <laughs> all right we've got our first piece here this one let's move this down here's our little thingy let's see so that's we've got our big head oh we don't need this remember so i'm going to click on the three dots and just hide selected okay let's look to see what else we have so we have empty space here. We've got this, okay. And on this one, there's no way, okay. We've got that and this. Okay, so let's do this. It looks like we got rid of that face. Uh, so here we're going to, let's move this, move object. We'll move it to the last one. Oh, no, I think we can move it. No, we do need to move it. Move it to the last one, confirm. So now on the last one, we've got these, and this was the belt, remember? I'm glad we we moved it around, or we um, we sliced it apart, because otherwise it, it would take up a lot of space, and it would probably require us to um, do another sheet of paper, which I don't wanna do. All right, so now this, is all on one sheet. So we've cut one, we've got two sheets here and you can use a 12 by 24 mat, which is what I'm planning on doing and putting two 12 by 12 black sheets on here. All right, so we've got this, that's good. We've got nothing on this one. This one, we're gonna need to do it in two. And I'll just do this because if you wanted to save this, you have a lot of usable, reusable cardstock. All right. Um, and then this is another sheet. Okay, we're good there. Let's look at the red. Red is just the holly, right? Uh, the berries for the holly. This is the tongue. Um, these are the gums, I'm guessing. His hair, this we can put in here. I'll put it high up because if you wanted to save this, you could use this, this, and this is, you know, usable for your scraps for your next project. All right, here he is. The hands, let's move the hands, move object. I think we can fit it with his face. Oh man, barely. <laughs> it's touching the ears. If we had separated this, we could definitely make it fit, right? But just the way it is, it was it's a tight squeeze, but it worked, so we're good. And that's it. So you're gonna cut nine sheets, because remember the one sheet was totally blank. All right, I hope that was helpful. It is so fun doing these off the map projects. They make great photo props, party props, um, and people love to see them. So anyway, I'm excited to do this one. I am going to cut it, and then I'm gonna do the assembly portion with you. And so let me know if you have any comments or questions or special requests. All right, see you guys later. Oh, but before I forget, um, 
last quick announcement is uh, this is going up in December, December 2022, February 2023. I am doing two sets of workshops. There is a Zoom workshop with Josie from Sophie's Crafts, Sophie's Corner Crafts. Uh, we are going to do Zoom. We're doing, you could do, you could catch all three classes or whichever one you want, cake toppers, 3D letters, and an off the mat class. Then if you can actually make it in person, uh, we will be in Texas. We're going to be in Arlington, Texas. So in the Dallas uh, Fort Worth area. We're going to be at the Barely Art headquarters. You can get all this information on the uselesscrafter.com. Same set of workshops, but this time in person at the Barely Art headquarters. It's going to be so, so fun. So please check out the information. Let me know if you're new to the, um, new to owning one of these machines. It is a great way to start because um, for the in-person, we'll cut out everything, you're gonna assemble it, and then we're gonna talk you and walk you through everything, including design space. Um, it, the Zoom class will have the tutorial for you to walk through the design space. We'll put it together. So it's, you know, it's not as amazing as in-person. I, I mean, I just, I'm just gonna say it. It's so much fun in person, but online too, it's still a lot of fun. We, we get to talk and, and you know, you guys get to meet each other and stuff. So that's a lot of fun. Um, but the, you know, the, the thing that I really like about the classes is that it is for a wide range of crafters. We're going to touch upon and we're going to help you if you're kind of new, uh, if you're brand new, kind of new, if you are established, but you want to learn our tips and tricks, it's just, we picked really awesome projects. So it doesn't matter what level you are, you're not gonna be um, holding this back or anything. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And a lot of times the questions are good for everyone because you know with crafting, you kind of just pick it up and you keep going. And sometimes you're doing it um, not the most efficient way or not the best way or not using the right materials, whatever it is. It's, it's a lot of fun to collaborate with everyone. So anyway, I hope that information is fun and interesting. So please check that out, theuselesscrafter.com. The link will be definitely in the description. It's going to be so fun. All right. And it's called XOXO Craft Girls. See you then. Bye.